In this video, I'm going to talk about this Glide template I created called the Multi-Portfolio Stock Tracker. The purpose of this app is to make it easy for you to keep track of all of your portfolios which can exist in multiple different investment accounts. The first step in using this app is to create a portfolio. You can create as many portfolios as you wish. For this example, let's create a 401k portfolio. We can add stocks to the portfolio in the Stocks tab. Let's create another portfolio named Individual. And now that we have the two portfolios created, we can now add stocks to them. We can now go to the Stocks tab and click Add. Be careful, there are some stocks that are listed on more than one exchange with the same symbol. For example, Royal Bank of Canada with the symbol RY is listed in the Toronto Stock Exchange and in the New York Stock Exchange. So if you would like to get the Toronto Stock Exchange RY stock, you need to put TSE colon semicolon RY. If not, Google Finance may resolve it to the New York Stock Exchange stock. So in this example, we can also add mutual funds. So let's add Vanguard Mutual Fund to the 401k portfolio. Number of shares, let's say 100, book value of 1,000. The number of shares in the book value, you can obtain this information from your actual brokerage. Purchased in 2018, for example. You could upload the image of Vanguard, the company logo. Once it uploads, we can now click Add. Wait for a few seconds for Google Finance to fetch the data for this. And here we go. Let's add another stock. In this case, let us add VXUS also to the 401k portfolio. Number of shares 10 again. Let's say the value is 500. You can add. Then let's add some stocks to the individual portfolio. Let's add Apple, for example. Number of shares 20, book value 1000. Okay. Then let's add Microsoft, SFT. Individual, okay, number of shares, let's say 10, value 500, for example. Let's click Add. So stocks in the Stocks tab can be searched via their name, right, or the name of the portfolio, or they can be filtered by the portfolio name as well. Let us now take a look at the details of the stock and mutual fund. Let's look at Apple. This first information says the last quote exchange time it shows the date and the time. Okay, this is the actual last trade time for this information below. This is going to be the local time of the exchange. So for example, Apple is in the NASDAQ, so this is going to be New York's time zone. We can see the portfolio that's assigned to, the price, the previous day's price change, the percentage of that change, the number of shares which you provided, the market value, which is the price times the number of shares, the book value, which you provided, and the average cost per share, which is going to be the book value divided by the number of shares and the gain or loss of that stock. And lastly, the stock information. We have the price to earnings ratio, currency, 52 week high and 52 week low. Now let's take a look at the mutual fund. As you can see, we don't have that last quote time for mutual fund because mutual funds prices are only updated at the end of the day. Okay, so we have the first section is going to be the similar to the stock, the same type of information. Then at the bottom, we're going to see the information specific to mutual funds. It's going to be called fund facts. So we have the expense ratio, the yield, year to date return, the yield, and the Morningstar rating. 
stocks can be edited by clicking on this pencil icon. You can change the symbol, the number of shares. Let's try to change the 200, the book value, the portfolio this is assigned to, the comments, and the image. The change is effective immediately. As you noticed, the market value has now changed, as well as the average cost per share and the gain or loss based on the new book value and the number of shares. Let us now take a look at the portfolio. So as you can see, says right here, quotes are not sourced from all markets and may be delayed up to 20 minutes. So this app does not provide real time stock information. Okay, there is gonna be a delay in the information that is provided. And when you click refresh all quotes, it's going to do it for all stocks in the app, not just for this individual portfolio. Okay, so my recommendation is at a minimum, refresh the quote at least once a day, or if you want to do it more frequently, at least give it a 30 minute interval between each refresh. Because even if you, if you hit refresh within a minute, it may not necessarily refresh the actual stock price within that minute. If we scroll down, we're going to see the portfolio breakdown. The middle number is the total of the entire portfolio, okay? The market value of that portfolio. Then we have the breakdown per stock, okay? So take, take into account, if your account has multiple currencies, this does not do any currency conversions, okay? So my suggestion is for a given portfolio, Make sure they're all in the same currency so that this number will be accurate. Portfolios cannot be edited in the sense that their names cannot be changed. If you would like to change a name, the best way to do it is to add another portfolio, then transfer the stocks, reassign it to that new portfolio name. But they can be deleted only if all of its holdings have been deleted. So in this example, the 401k, let's delete these two holdings. We go to stocks. Okay, we get to delete each stock individually. Delete. Right here, I'm going to delete this one. Then we're gonna go back to the portfolio. Click edit. Now we can delete the portfolio. And that is the end of my demonstration. I hope you will find this app useful and it will help you to keep track of all of your portfolios easily.